This one's with another MLB player, Jake Fraley. Now, Jake is playing for the Seattle Mariners. Uh, last year, he was called up mid-year, uh, had an injury sustained towards the end of uh, 2019. Gonna have him come on the air right now, getting ready for the season upcoming. So we're gonna give him a call right now, talk to him about the season and whatnot, and just about his career thus far. Jake, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, yeah, if you're ready, we'll just kick it right into it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you, you know, getting called up last year and, you know, just going through that process, obviously, you know, you had some off-the-field stuff going on, uh, just reading up about you, and also some on-the-field stuff with the injury sustained. For you, I mean, going into 2020, I mean, what's your main focus going to be to sustain kind of your place in the Seattle Mariners, you know, major league system, and also just, you know, sustain yourself as an everyday player uh, for the Mariners? Uh, I mean, really just staying on track with what I know I do best and what I know I need to get better at. Um, you know, all those things have been addressed for this offseason, just like they are every offseason. You're always going to have things you got to get better at. You know, the moment that you don't, kind of when you, you know, get a little bit of a sign that maybe it's time to hang it up. So that's always a uh, you know a good thing. And um, I mean, really going into this next season, it's the main focal point, at least for me. And I know it is going to be for you know the majority, especially the young guys. Uh, you know, in that clubhouse in Seattle is is more of uh, really establishing a, you know the culture that we want in that clubhouse because you know we all understand that. It is a huge, huge focal point when it comes to us, and, you know, achieving what we want to achieve, um, you know, not just getting to the playoffs, but ultimately winning a World Series, and that starts with the clubhouse, it starts with, you know, how the guys are, you know, going about their business each and every single day, and, um, you know, just that environment, you know, in general, and, and, and how we're establishing that, you know, amongst each other. And then on the other hand, you know, when that becomes your focus, when you start taking the focus away from yourself and, you know, start becoming a servant for others and, uh, and, you know, celebrating everybody's success around you more than you celebrate your own success, you know, that's a direct correlation to your performance. Um, and I, I'm a true believer in that. And it, it helps your performance go to the next level. So, you know, those will be the focal points. Obviously now, like I said, going in the off season and, um, you know, already being in January now and, you know, heading to camp in, you know, a month, a little over four weeks now. You know, those things are established for me. You know, those things have been worked on, and I'm excited to, you know, put that out on the field and then continue from, you know, what I'm building each and every year. And then, again, you know, just reiterating, you know, establishing that culture that starts, uh, you know, that starts now with yourself, um, with all of us doing our own things, and then the next step will be, you know, getting that clubhouse all together and just make sure anything goes on forth into the season. And, you know, just speaking, you know, with the Mariners, obviously you weren't with them uh, at the beginning of your professional career. Just looking back, you know, for you, you know, being with the Tampa Bay Rays and, you know, getting traded in that Mike Zunino deal. For you, I mean, having the deal with kind of, you know, trying to elevate your career and elevate the reach level, but also, you know, going into a new organization. I mean, was that something that you felt was challenging for you at first and you kind of overcame it? Uh at some point, you know, within uh, the few weeks after? I mean, how did that go for you in terms of dealing with the trade, but also, you know, staying professional and making sure that you keep on doing your job? Yeah, uh, I mean, anytime you're a minor leaguer and you're traded for big league, it's a big deal. Um, so, you know, right off the bat, I was very excited. Um, you know, me and my agent were understanding, you know, this was a very big thing in my career, you know, with that next step. Um and not only that, but also going to a, you know, an organization that, you know, is just thriving with opportunities for young guys. Um, so, you know, you start putting in all those different variables and, you know, it becomes a very, very, you know, big ordeal for, for my career and where, where I'm at, um, you know, not being, you know, too many years in a professional baseball, you know, just being drafted in 16. And at that time, obviously only, um, you know, playing two full seasons of, uh, a professional baseball so you know it was a big a big step and um you know obviously you you know you have your you know different things that you think about going into that you know i'm going into a new organization that i think i knew uh i knew two different players on that team one very well the other one was you know just kind of 
playing against him and otherwise I didn't know anybody you know I didn't know any of the coaches I didn't know any of the people there so it was more about me um you know really taking the little opportunities that I had while I was there and once I got there you know to get to know everybody for everybody to get to know me um but also you know understanding you know why I got to that point um you know why I'm at you know the point that I'm at in my career right now um you know while I you know I've been able to put together um you know, the very good seasons that I've been able to put together to get me to this point and, and staying true to that. Um, you know, it's, uh, there were quite a bit of changes, but at the same time, you know, it was the same stuff, just a different, a different name on the front of the Jersey and, um, and learning new faces. And, you know, for you, obviously, you know, being, uh, you know, one of the best prospects within the Mariner system, obviously being a part of that trade to go over there, uh, you know, you had to be one of the key pieces that they were obviously looking at. For you, you know, just looking at your stats line, you know, looking, doing the background on, you know, kind of how you progress through your career. Obviously, you know, your bat's always been there in terms of, you know, having a high average or whatnot. But, you know, going into pro ball, uh, you know, you had some struggles, you know, with some of the different levels you were at. But you made that change. Uh, obviously, just reading up about you, you've had some adjustments made to your swing. I mean, how key was it for you to make those adjustments? And how quickly did you see uh, kind of the changes, you know, progress on the field and, you know, pay off for you? Yeah, um, immediately. Uh, you know, I, I made those changes right after I got drafted after uh, my little short stay in the short season uh, for, I don't know what it was, like a month, a month and a half that I was there right after I signed. And from that point forward, I came across the, the guy that I worked with, Lorenzo Garmendia and grad in baseball. And, uh, and you're alive and, you know, putting my ego aside and, and, and putting my pride aside and understanding, you know, what I needed to get better at, you know, if I wanted to achieve what I know I could achieve on a baseball field. Um, started learning about, you know, what I could do to, to improve everything that that I'm doing already. Um, and just going, you know, forward from there, we uh, started working um, a lot. Obviously, I, I revamped my entire swing from the ground up. Um, and from every aspect of it, every single aspect. And, uh, I mean, I got back to that, you know, my first full season of spring training and absolutely crushed it at spring training. Um, I was able to, I was fortunate and blessed enough to be able to skip low A. I went straight to high A going into my first full season. Um, and then, you know, I had a little bit of bad luck and we had, uh, you know, a little bit of beef going back and forth between us and another team. And I was, you know, just the next guy to get hit in line to get hit. And, uh, you know, the guy kind of lost a little bit of control and instead of hitting me in the butt of the ribs, he, he cut a fastball in my kneecap and, you know, ended up knocking me out for the whole year. Um, and then from that point on, I ended up going and playing uh, winter ball in Australia and the rest is history uh, for the last, you know, three and a half seasons with counting that winter ball um, that I had. It's, it's been everything uh, that, you know, I knew it was going to be and expected it to be with all the changes I made and it's continuing to get better every single year. And, you know, just looking, obviously, at the offense side of the ball, that's one of the key things, I'm um, sure, you know, why you were drafted at the position you were at and then, you know, why you were in the trade just because your numbers, you know, have always been consistent, always been, you know, probably one of the top, you know, in the organization just in terms of your batting average overall and looking at your power and speed. But for you, how much time uh, are you able to put into the defensive side of the ball just because for you, you know, it's probably a little bit tougher to get that experience and get – kind of that game action in uh, when you're not playing winter ball or not in spring training just because, you know, you're not going to have nine guys on the field. You're not going to have base runners moving. How much time are you able to put into the defensive side of the ball, you know, just looking and going into spring training? Yeah, um, I mean, when you're looking at an outfielder and, and what we need to do, um, obviously, especially for me, knowing that I can play center field, you know, with the best of them, uh, and uh, improving it, uh, you know, being able to make those plays – Consistently in a year in and year out, um, you know, I, I feel like I've done a good job of that and obviously we'll continue to do that. Like I said earlier, continue to adjust and continue to get better. And so, um, you know, a big part of that is, especially in the off season, you know, you said a good point, you know, it's very difficult um, to be able to get those game like experience and, you know, practice without, you know, actually being in a game. So in the off season, it's more, you know, just making sure that <clears throat> you know, you're continuing to improve 
you don't have flexibility in that mobility, so that, you know your your legs, your muscles are able to you know go through the entire season. Of, you know, running down those balls, um, you know, being you know able to be a reliable um, you know guy that they can count on to go out there every single day, um, and just working on those fast switch muscles to be able to you know take those routes as quick and as fast as you can, and then you know once you get to spring training, you you allow yourself to have um, you know I'm fortunate enough to be able to. To live in uh, a state, you know, that's that's warm all year round. A lot of guys aren't, you know, able to do that. So I'm able to get out and film <clears throat> quite a few times before I even hit the spring training. Whereas, you know, some guys don't have that, um, you know, that possibility just because it's so cold um, where they're at. So for me, I'm able to take advantage of that. But, you know, I, I don't think that hinders those guys because, you know, once you get to spring training, you are able to get out there and it's more or less just – Adjusting your eyes. Um, it's adjusting your eyes to be able to get used to seeing that ball in the air and tracking it down. And you know, I think any outfielder will tell you that that adjustment with the eyes comes, you know, very very quick. It's more or less riding a bike. Um, the biggest thing is just making sure that you're staying on top of the fast twitch muscles and everything. And you know, I'm curious for you also, just because you know, before you made it to the major leagues last year, going into you know the Australian league in the off season uh, in 2017 uh end of that year and then going into 2018 for you i'm curious just because we had some other guys come on and you know talking about their experience i mean why do you feel at that point in your career it was the right time to make that move just to you know get those extra reps and you know how did that benefit you just in terms of you know going to play in a different country and you know solely focusing on the game uh of baseball for a little longer uh through the winter I'm sorry, you broke up quite a bit when you were explaining that. Could you repeat that? Yeah, no, just uh, just looking at your career thus far, in t- end of 2017, beginning of 2018, you went to the Australian uh, Baseball League in the winter. I'm just curious for you why, at that point in your career, you went over there, and just how did it help you, you know, obviously, you know, sustain success and obviously elevate your game going through that and just f- focusing on, you know, the baseball aspect of your life a little bit longer that year? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was a huge part. It was, um, you know, obviously I knew I had to do it. You know, I had, uh, you know, the, the, you know, handful of injuries that I've had in professional baseball have been, you know, on the side of bad luck. Um, you know, and when I say bad luck, I mean, you know, it's when you have like a hamstring or, um, I don't know, uh, obviously if something happens off the field, you know, those things are in ear control as far as, um, you know, with a hamstring or pulling a muscle, it's more or less you not, you know, preparing your body the proper way. And then obviously when you're talking about off-field stuff, something happens, obviously that's you in your control as well. So I've had quite a few things that have been out of my control. I, you know, it's just part of the game. It's part of baseball. It's part of sports. Um, and for me, you know, having that, um, you know, bad luck that year, uh, you know, I knew I had to get those at-bats back. So obviously, uh, you know, I ended up going for the winter ball. And, you know, Australia ended up being... Um, I was actually going to go to Puerto Rico that year, and then that was when the hurricane hit Puerto Rico and knocked out the entire country. So I ended up going to Australia um, just because uh, the Rays, you know, have a very good connection with Australia. They've been sending guys there for years and years, so um, you know, I had the opportunity and obviously took advantage of it so I could get those at bats back heading into the next year, and it was huge. You know, I was able to get out there and, and um, you know stay healthy, uh, play the entire off season. I was able to. Again, you know, go into another season, a fresh new season, I was able to show off all the changes that I made to my swing and, and not only build confidence in the Rays at the time, but, and I mean, obviously all other organizations, um, but also in myself, uh, you know, being able to go out there and, and do that every day and, and show what I know I can do on the baseball field, um, you know, it was very important. And I knew, you know, going into that and then obviously coming back from that, season in Australia, um, you know, I was eager to get that next season started because I knew it was just going to, you know, wave right over into the next season, and that's exactly what it did, and uh, so, you know, it was a big thing for me, and not only with, you know, instilling that, instilling and ensuring that confidence with, you know, all the other organizations, but, um, you know, also within myself. And, you know, just getting that experience, you know, obviously in a different country, I mean, how... Just, you know, I'm curious for you going over there, how easy of a transition was it or how not easy of a transition was it for you to, you know, deal with, you know, obviously playing baseball with dealing with, you know, different culture. Obviously, the game is probably played at a different pace. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I know in Puerto Rico 
And, you know, the Dominican, you see the fans almost have a kind of World Baseball Classic outlook on the games. Very energetic. And obviously, you know, having a, musicians for you going over to Australia. I mean, how easy was it to focus on the game or how uneasy was it to focus on the game based on the crowds and the atmosphere that you were put into? Yeah, I mean, it was an easy transition. Australia is very similar to the States. Um, it's very Americanized, especially uh, with their culture. Um, obviously, there's things that are different, uh, but that was, you know, fairly easy to get used to. Uh, it was, and I say that, you know, being a lot easier for me because I have my family with me. Um, so they they traveled with me over there, and they were with me that entire season. They actually traveled to all the road trips as well, so we got to we got to experience and see the entire country together. Um, so that was, you know, obviously that played a huge, huge part in that transition and being so simple for me, um, which, you know, I also believe that, you know, that was a big reason why I was able to also go over there and, and play so free and, and, you know, relax because I had them there with me. And that's, that's a huge, huge thing for, you know, for us players having to, you know, travel so much and, you know, be away from our, you know, comfort zones to say, um, but, you know, it was very easy for me, and, uh, you know, the baseball side of it was the same, you know, as anywhere you throw, hit, and, and, and run, and, um, again, it's just more of, you know, understanding that it is the same game, it's, it's, it's a kind of like a mental, uh, kind of like a mental, uh, a mental note that you can take, understanding that, you know, no matter where you go, or no matter what level you're at, it's the same game, um, and so, you know, I was able to take those experiences, and, even apply it, you know, when I got up to the big leagues this year, um, and, you know, like, I'll be able to carry that over going into next year as well. And, you know, obviously, congratulations just what, you know, being the Mariners 2019 Minor League Player of the Year, but for you, you. you know, going through that and obviously, you know, getting the notoriety as you change your swing and went up the rankings... I'm just curious for you, dealing with, you know, obviously the off-the-field attention as well as the on-the-field attention as, you know, getting that notoriety is certainly going to, you know, put an asterisk next to your name, you know, when uh, being put into the lineup. For you, you know, dealing with that uh, kind of mental challenge of just, you know, staying focused and staying grounded, how has that been for you thus far going into, you know, your major league call-up and you know, as you're getting ready for 2020, going into spring training, I'm sure, you know, with a different feel as you got a taste of the major leagues and with the notoriety last year? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, anyone will tell you, um, well, maybe not anybody, I would, I would hope the majority, um, obviously you want to stay humble. Um, for me, you know, that's a, a big part in, in, in how I live my life and what I have my life centered around and, and who I have my identity and you know, I'm a believer in Jesus. And, um, you know, my life is centered around that. My marriage is centered around that. Um, and that is everything. Uh, with what I do, it's what makes me tick. Um, and like I said, it's what I center everything in my life around, um, including my career. And so for me, you know, I find that as a, a very easy part, um, you know, because I, like I said, I understand my identity and, and you know, that is in Christ and, and it allows me to, to take a step back a lot of the times and, and look at the big picture of what truly matters. Um, and it allows me to relax and, um, and really understand what, you know, what really matters. And, you know, that's not the game of baseball. You know, I'm using this as, you know, something that I get to do and enjoy as almost a cherry on top um, with this season in my life. Um, but for me, it's it's a big part in, in understanding what is entrusted to me, um, you know, by the Lord with the gifts that he's blessed me with. And that's to, to, you know, I'm able to be in a clubhouse around, um, you know, 25, 26 guys for eight months out of the year every single day. So, you know, being able to utilize those opportunities to be able to talk about the gospel and talk about the love of Jesus, and, you know, allow my actions to show that, um, allow Jesus to be, you know, manifested through my actions and what I do every day, um, you know, with all those guys. And, you know, I take that, um, you know, very seriously. Um, and so, you know, that's how, you know, it allows me to really, like I said, reiterating, um, you know, to take a step back and look at the big picture of what truly matters and um, that's definitely not the game of baseball. I'm, I'm going to spend more of my life not playing this game than I am playing it right now. Um, you know, and that's something that a lot of people have a hard time, you know, understanding, especially as a young athlete, you know, in their sport, because um, it's something that you don't like to think about. Um, but, you know, when, when you stop, you know, <clears throat> leaning your life and, you know, your joy and your happiness and something that's, you know, imperfected and, 
it's something that you'll never catch up to, then you quickly realize, um, you know, how important it is um, to know who Jesus is and, and, you know, what he did on the cross for you and, and how important that, you know, personal intimate relationship with him is uh, far above anything else that happens. And, you know, you mentioned, it, you know, I was going to ask you, you know, in a little bit, but that's what you brought up, you know, not playing baseball, you know, your whole life, you know, people just think, you know, that's your whole life. But for you, you know, having that faith, having your family, as you mentioned before, for you, I mean, are there any, you know, kind of thoughts or any ideas, you know, after baseball, what you're looking forward to, you know, whether it's spending more time with your family or, you know, taking up something that, you know, you might not have done, you know, while playing baseball professionally? Is there anything that, you know, kind of interests or piques your interest in terms of, you know, off the field? Um, uh, no, of course, you know, I have quite a few things, uh, you know, that I definitely want to do. Um, I mean, there's... <laughs> I grew up, uh, I grew up out in the country, out in, in uh, Maryland, and, you know, all, uh, a majority of my family still lives out there, um, and, you know, I grew up with my grandfather, you know, around trucks and, you know, working on trucks and all that stuff, so, that, I mean, I have a, a very big, uh, you know, heart in that, and it's kind of like a big, big thing that I do in the off season that gives you know, me a lot of peace and kind of helps me to separate myself from things with, uh, you know, working on my truck and, and you know, my grandfather drove an 18-wheeler, and you know, I grew up my entire life uh, as a young, young kid, ever since I was very, very little, as long as I can remember, going to work with him and, and working on the truck with him. It's something that, you know, holds me a lot of peace. Obviously, it has a very, uh, you know, special connection that I have with my grandfather that obviously holds me to that, um, and it's something that I enjoy to do. But, I mean, I think it, that's something that, you know, as I go through the seasons in my life and, you know, when I get to that point, whenever that is, um, you know, when baseball ends up, you know, becoming a, um, you know, behind me in essence, you know, in my life, it's really going to be a point in my life when I'm probably, you know, I'm going to sit down and, and really do a lot of, uh, you know, praying and then, you know, going to my secret place with the Lord and, and really, you know, listening to him and what his heart has. Uh, you know, for me and, and what his purpose is for me in that next season of my life. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm very, very excited about it. And like I said, everything that I just talked about, you know, it's it's where my heart is. Um, yeah. It's where it'll always be in Jesus. Um, and so that's what excites me about it. You know, I, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a supernatural piece that, you know, you can't understand unless you experience it yourself. And, you know, obviously, you know, talking about that, you know, having a lot of, you know, kind of enthusiasm when talking about it, just hearing you talk about it. For you, I'm curious, too, because, you know, obviously 2019 probably didn't end the way you wanted, just with, you know, getting called up and, then you know, getting injured. How excited are you or how eager are you to, you know, get to spring training and, you know, kind of forget about that injury and, you know, just move on from, you know, that kind of downfall, that kind of, you know, hit at a wrong time and ready to get back on the field and show why, uh, you belong in the major leagues as opposed to, you know, being in the minors? Um, I mean, I think I've done a very good job of, of proving that I, I belong in the big leagues. Um, you know, I think I've done everything to, that I need to in the minor leagues. Um, and so for me, I, I don't look at it as, uh, you know, not ending the way that I wanted it to. Um, like I said, you know, I mean, I've explained – a couple times, you know, within the last couple of minutes with you about, you know, how, what my life is based around um, and, you know, how that allows me to kind of, you know, look at the big picture and, and take a step back. Um, and that's exactly what I've always done with every situation that, um, you know, happens in my life. And, and that's the great thing about, you know, living by faith and understanding of Jesus is that you're not, you know, your, your, you know, actions and your thoughts um, and your emotions are not dictated by your circumstances. Um, so, for me, um, you know, it was really allowing me to have a very, very unique learning experience. Um, you know, I was able to take a step back while I was up there when that, you know, again, something that was out of my control with how I got injured with Malik running into me. Um, and, you know, I was able to utilize that. Uh, you know, I was around a lot of, you know, great minds that have been around baseball for a very long time. Um, guys that I'm going to be around, God willing, for, um, you know, a, a very big chunk, if not my whole career, you know, in Seattle. Um, and utilizing that, um, you know, learning from, you know, everything that's up there, everything that, you know, I was able to experience 
and now you know looking at that and, and being able to you know understand everything that i learned from it um it makes me that much more excited and that much more comfortable going into this next year because um you know it's almost like a little bit of a stage that you know i've already like said experienced and um have learned from uh and understand how to incorporate that uh you know going forward to to be able to improve you know what i'll be able to do on the baseball field now, you know, just, you know, hearing about that and hearing about your career so far has been really cool to hear. I just wanted to ask you, you know, as we kind of wrap up, just, you know, five questions, you know, first thing that comes to your head, uh, just that, you know, you can ramble off uh, if you want. Okay. Uh, for you, I mean, obviously, having the luxury of having different bats, uh, you know, available at your disposal, what's your go-to bat and why? Uh, Louisville Slugger. Um, my swing the Adam Jones model, um, okay. and it was just something that a teammate of mine, Nate Lowe, actually, um, he's in the big leagues with the Rays, um, caught me on to it and told me I should try it, and ever since I picked it up, I've never put it back down, and I don't plan to anytime soon. All right, and then, you know, just obviously, you know, in college, you didn't have the beard, but now having, you know, the big beard, for you, are we should we expect that in 2020, seeing that, uh, you know, as you make your way to spring training and into the season? Uh, yeah, you know, it's not, I, I shaved off, and then once the season ended, I shaved off quite a bit, and let it grow out for a little bit, and then I just shaved off a little bit more a couple of weeks ago, um, so that, uh, going into the season, and from that point on, I'm not going to touch it again, uh, so I think I'm going to start making it a, kind of like a little bit of a habit and a personal tradition of mine to, to grow it out the entire baseball season, and then once it ends, Save off a little bit and start that process all over again. So hopefully next year uh, and in the years to come, they can uh, have an extra month of growing out a little bit longer. Now, how much does your wife dislike or like the beard just in terms of, you know, having it be that long? She loves it. Uh, she likes okay. it when I have it long. She likes it when I have it medium length. She likes it when I'm cleanly shaven. So, I mean, she, she doesn't care. She has no preference. All right, awesome. And, you know, for you, you know, obviously switching organizations and, you know, being with the Mariners now, who would you say is your favorite teammate, obviously, on the team and why? Man, that, you know, that's a tough question. I have, man, I, I have a core group of five guys that are, I mean, man, they're up there with my all-time favorite human beings. That's our, right. yeah, you can go with five then. <laughs> If I've ever come across, and they are very, very close friends of mine, will be lifelong friends well, well after baseball. Um, that, I mean, I have to go with Justin Dunn, Evan White, Kyle Lewis, Braden Bishop, and Timmy Lopes. Okay. I mean, those guys are, I mean, they're my guys. Um, and, uh, and they all know it, so. And, you know, speaking of that, you know, just talking about all you guys being, you know, kind of the young core coming up in the Mariners, how excited are you to, you know, be a part of that, you know, kind of transition and kind of the new age in Seattle and, you know, being so close with them? I mean, how much do you think that's going to translate to on-field success? Oh, it's a huge part. Um, I mean, everything I was just talking about with, uh, you know, establishing that culture, you know, that starts with a core group of guys. So for us, it's something that I feel like, um, you know, the majority of us other than Braden and, uh, other than Braden and, um, and Timmy, we're all in Arkansas together. So, you know, that huge reason of why we were, you know, so successful in one of the best minor league teams in, in baseball last year in Arkansas was because of that. Um, and like I was saying earlier, you know, that's a direct, a direct correlation to how each of us had performed individually because of, you know, that culture that was created. And so, you know, having us, all of us, you know, the guys that I, I just mentioned were, you know, we're all bought into that and, and we're all very excited to establish that, you know, culture within, you know, that Seattle clubhouse and to see it progress um, into the success that we all saw when we were in double A. And, you know, for you, you know, getting to the majors last year, second to last question for you, who thus far in your career is that one pitcher that, you know, you always struggle with or, you know, always has that kind of edge that, you know, you're going to try to fix up in 2020. I mean, who's the pitcher that you find toughest, uh, just, you know, off the top of your head? Oh, man. Uh, I mean, I had two last year. One of them's in the big leagues, and the other one will be shortly. Um, I, I'm i pretty sure, I know his last name's Green. I'm pretty sure his first name's Connor. I just don't want to mess it up, but he's with Kansas City. Yeah, Connor Green. All right. Last year. He, 
is a very, very good pitcher. Um, he's got like that scary attitude on the mound that, you know, I like to bring to when I come to that. So, you know, seeing a guy like that that has it on the mound um, is, you know, it's awesome. It is that competitiveness. And then the other one for me was Dustin May um, with the Dodgers. And, you know, he's very, very talented. Um, and you ask anybody that stepped in that box against him, they will all say the same thing. So, you know, I'm really, really looking. I faced, like I said, I faced both of those guys quite a bit in Double A last year, and I'm really, really looking forward to facing those guys again in the big leagues. And you know, for you, just final question: being in Seattle, obviously, you know they're known for the rain and you know the cold uh, weather. For you, what's the one thing that you wish you could change about the city of Seattle, uh, just off the top of your head? Probably be how cold it is in the beginning of the baseball season. I'm not, you ask any of my close, close uh, buddies and everybody else. I, and it's, it's weird because I, 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 I was born in the Northeast, so I come from cold, man. I hate the cold. I can't yeah. stand it, especially when I'm playing baseball. So for me, I mean, I would, I would love for, you know, that beautiful, beautiful, perfect weather that Seattle offers all summer long just – in the beginning of the season as well. Just to stick out a few extra months? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you know, thanks for coming on. Obviously, uh, you know, I know you're busy uh, before you go to spring training, so thanks for taking a uh, little time to talk with us about your career and, you know, just looking forward, uh, you know, even after your career. So just thanks for coming on. Nope, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I uh, hope to talk to you soon, and, you know, can't wait to see uh, what you do in 2020. Thank you, man. God bless you. You have a good day, all right? You too. Yep. God bless. Yeah, so that was Jake Fraley of the Seattle Mariners. Great to hear from him. 2019 Minor, minor League Player of the Year for the Mariners organization. Uh, got called up at the end of last year. So thanks to Jake for coming on. Uh, this is the end of our second segment on episode four. Now we're on. Uh, obviously, uh, we're going to do this in increments of two. So this is the second episode of Jake. So just rallying off with that. Thanks for listening to us. Uh second installment on season one of the competitor talk uh is ending with jake and we're going to continue on to segment three with the next player coming up uh looking forward to announcing it and thanks for watching